This driveway certainly wasn't your standard uh, double car driveway. It's probably about 15 times the size of that. In fact, it's 675 square meters. Time wasn't on our side. Because the other issue that we had was, although Nelly was 18 months old, we had baby number two on the way and Lennon was about to be born in about three weeks time. So when Mike and his guys said they'd come on board and help me with it, they said, you know this is gonna take about three to four weeks, Craig. And I said, Michael, it can't. I'm setting you a task of 10 days. We need you in and out within 10 days. It's been a hectic and cold, hard work in winter time trying to get the house finished off because it was March. First week in March 2019, Laura was about 40 weeks pregnant and we just about got the house livable, certainly not finished. And one of the main jobs to finish off around the house was the driveway. And this driveway certainly wasn't your standard uh, double car driveway it's probably about 15 times the size of that in fact it's 675 square meters and whilst we were kind of building the house a lot of the old rubble i mean the existing house that we knocked down here was a very old one we crushed it all up and all of that hardcore got spread out over the drive as hardcore and then that got built up on with hundreds and hundreds of ton of crushed road stone, which is like a recycled stone. So the driveway got put on hold. It got put on hold for probably 18 months while we kind of settled in the house, done lots of snagging work inside the house. And then as the months went by, the planning stages started to come into place with the driveway. So I was concerned the style of block I was going to use was your standard block that you'd use on a normal house driveway when you've got a single drive or a double drive. But I was thinking the length of our driveway, it might kind of look a little bit, I don't know, I was concerned it wouldn't quite work. And I'm sure it has on other people's driveways. But I looked into a different type of block and it was four tiers permeable blocks. Now these were a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper. However, they could be fitted very differently they didn't have to fit to a gradual fall where all the water runs away from them. They could be installed level. Now that made it more appealing for me because of the mass size we had and the overall look of it, that the rainwater wouldn't run across the surface of them, would actually soak away into the ground. It's better for the environment. So it ticked a lot of boxes for us. So all that hardcore we put down, we started to scrape up and re-spread out and then we had to buy in another, I think about a hundred ton of crushed roadstone to build up all the lower areas to get this kind of flat bed across this area of 675 square meters. So that alone was about another two or three days on there. And I brought in a small team to help me on the machine on there and a, a couple of extra laborers to spread all the hardcore around. Once that was all spread and shaped up level, we then run very big rollers over the top of it and compact it down nice and firm because we knew we'd have wagons and vans and things driving across it. But once that was done, the next big job was putting the edgings in. So me, John and Stuart started to dig the trench right the way around the outside perimeter, ready for the concrete. We did mix quite a lot of the concrete by hand because we had some ballast left over here in bags of cement. However, there was just too much of it to mix. So we ended up getting some delivered. This was a little bit easier to wheelbarrow around and spot into the positions where we required it. Michael started putting string lines up from corner to corner. Once the boys had laid the concrete down, they tampered it with some large poles to get any air bubbles out of it and make it nice and compact. Then they started to bed the blocks into position, making sure they were level on each block as they went along. 
with the finished top height being 150mm below damp proof caution. Now these are the engines I'm using, they're a terracotta colour, they're part of the 40 euro range. They stand at 500mm in length, they're about 100mm deep and 200 millimeters wide. Now, as you can see behind it here, this is our concrete strip foundation that I've also dug out and put right the way around the whole outside perimeter of the driveway. That stands at about 100, 150 millimeters deep, nice and compact down its level. These are gonna be sat and bedded on top of there with a wet sand and cement mix. Again, made nice and perfectly and level. And you can see behind here, these big old timbers. When I knocked down the original house from here, these in fact, with a floor joist, they were lovely big solid wood. I just couldn't do it throwing them away. So, clean them all up. I've sanded down a little bit of the edges. I've spiked them and bedded them into position. They've been perfect to hold back this concrete and sit the edgings on top. The edgings will come up about half the way and then you just see the top of the wood peeking out the top. So now the concrete is dry, we've brought in the block fitters and they've started to bed the edgings right the way around the outer perimeter of the driveway. These are laid with a nice strong three to one sanded cement and made perfectly level, which will be the finished edge for all of the driveway. Keep John over there, look. Keep John a wave. Keep John a wave. The edgings that we chose were extremely heavy and a very strong, dense concrete material. They were designed for a commercial road. Laying heavy, dense blocks like this is a real tough job. It's not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. But Michael and his boys certainly had it covered. Then there was one final bit of preparation on the hardcore. Filling in any little gaps that the machines may have made and compacting them down using a whacker plate before the stones laid. So it's now day three. We've had 20 tonne more delivered of this limestone grit, which I'm loading up onto the machine, putting it into the little mini digger, taking it around, dropping it into position. The lads are leveling it all out with the rakes and then the blocks are laid directly on top of it. Then the excitement started because the boys started to finally lay the blocks. They started off right at the top end of the driveway in front of our workshop and worked their way around. The wagons delivered tens of thousands of them in pallet loads in our street and we lifted them up with the telehandler and drove them in and started to spot them in the position where we needed them. Whilst this was going on at the front of the workshop, the rest of the team were working their way up on the side of the workshop. They were flying through the blocks. Now this type of block with it being permeable that it allows the rain to simply sweep its way through it. So it's very important what materials you use below. This stone that we're using is a limestone. It's grinded down to about two to six millimeters thick. And the guys have got a layer of a minimum of 50 millimeters deep. And that allows all of the rainwater to go through the block and through the stone. And then of course spread out evenly flat. So each corner of the area will have a drain with that sunken into the ground and then allow any excess water that's building up in these stones that's not going into the earth to run away into the drains. Mike and his brother and his small team, the landscape gardeners from the other side of Manchester. And I've got to be honest, they were like machines the way them guys worked. Full of good looks and charm as well, just like the rest of my team. So these um, permeable blocks we're using, tell us a little bit about how they work. Uh, we've well, got clean stone underneath. We're averaging about 50 to 60 mil of clean stone. It's a six mil, very clean. It lets all the water through, no fines in it. Inside the block, you've got little notches. Yeah, you've got three sizes. Uh, through the little notches on the side of the block, that's where the water goes through. Yes. So the difference between this block and a traditional block paver is um, 
this bottle lets the water through so you can install this level. Um, with a traditional paver, you have to create your own falls into air cold drainage, gullies. Yeah. Um, so, really, yeah, this is ideal for the job we're on, keeping it level. And do you all use machines? Yeah, well, myself and my brother use a 360 driver. Yeah. Uh, I've got all the lads that got the tickets for the dumpers, uh, rollers. It's all the basic stuff that they need. I didn't know this was your brother, eh? Yeah, yeah, me this one. Yeah, me yeah. <laughs> He's older, actually. He's older than you, is he? <laughs> Who's the best looking? Oh, obviously. <laughs> Who's on camera? <laughs> So once we completed the driveway right up along one side of the house where it meets the front of the workshop and the side of the workshop, we can then start on the front of the house. And there may have been about eight or nine hundred blocks that needed cutting. It was a slow and tedious job. Either way, Michael's brother stood up to the challenge and took on the responsibility. Now the beauty about permeable blocks is you can fit them actually level, but you fit them on top of this stone. It's a limestone, it's clean, it's crushed down to between two and six millimeters wide. It's laid over the entire area of a minimum of 50 millimeters deep, spread out evenly. Then these metal bars are placed in place. They run the string line in like this, set the levels, drag the stone back, so it's perfectly level. And then you can start laying the blocks on. The blocks are laid on just five to 10 millimeters higher than the string line, which is running to the both edges either side. Once the stone is laid and left to go flat, the sand is spread in between the joist. Then it's whack it down that five millimeters and it works perfectly level. You have four corners where you put your land drains in there below the ground, so they're out of sight completely and they will drain away any excess water that isn't absorbed into the ground. So these are the blocks that I'm using. They're four tier is Aquaset permeable block, specially designed with a slot in the sides on two sides of it and then a chamfered edge which allows the water, the rainwater, to race through there at quite a fast rate. The Aquaset range is available in a wide variety of colours and finishes, including traditional, payback, vendage, charcoal and pennant, which is what we're using. So we had about three tonne of this grit delivered yesterday. It's a kind of slate material crunched up to just two millimetres wide. And what it does basically is it gets laid out all the way over the finished block paviors. It's brushed in, so it fills in all of the gaps right the way around all four edges of the actual block. And it allows the water to still race through it at a fast pace. And once you've covered all the joints, then the guys go over that with a whacker plate and it compacts it down even tighter. Now, most of the time, the weather was on our side. However, time wasn't on our side because the other issue that we had was, although Nelly was 18 months old, we had baby number two on the way and Lennon was about to be born in about three weeks time. So when Mike and his guys said they'd come on board and help me with it, they said, you know this is going to take about three to four weeks, Craig. And I said, Michael, it can't. I'm setting you a task of 10 days. We need you in and out within 10 days. So that really turned the heat up. Today is the final day of the block pavia. These two packs will be laid and then we will be complete. It's only took nine days in total. The first two days, the block layers put the edges in right the way around the perimeter of the driveway. That was about 180 lineal meters. Then they laid 675 square meters of these four tier permeable blocks. And when it came to that last day of that last, probably about 20 or 30 square meters of block work that had to go down, Laura and I were getting excited. I remember Michael shouting me saying, Craig, tell Laura these are gonna be complete in the next hour. So Laura and I came out to fit the last couple of blocks. So Laura, it's finally the last block time. It's well, all, all I never yours. I'd see the day. Here we go. <laughs> it only took us a year, hasn't it, to get our driveway done? And That's before it. I've given birth. Before you've given birth. Three weeks off before our baby boy is born. So it's a tight fit. Yay! 
It's fit, that's it. Hey. <laughs> you know, a year has gone by now since we completed the drive. Lennon was born, he's, he's almost a year old now. And honestly, when Laura and I drive in and out of this, that probably isn't a day goes by where we just think, how, how kind of privileged we are to you know, own such a beautiful house and it all come together the way it has done. And the driveway just seemed to be the icing on the top of the cake. The house was beautiful once we built it, but it never felt complete until we got the driveway done. And it was totally the right choice using four tiers, permeable blocks, and the color that we had just blended in well with the house and the red edgings right the way around as well. The terracotta color to that just works so well with the house brick. So I can safely say our dream build has become our home and I couldn't be any happier. <laughs>